we're going to talk about the retouch tab in infinite retouch if you don't have infinite retouch please download it at infinite-tools.com um, you're able to get a trial version which you can use and follow along as well without even needing to purchase it which is really really cool i think in my opinion um, and if you want to see any of the other videos please check out the website it has a ton of other content relating to every single facet and function of this plugin itself now let's go ahead and talk about it in the beginning we have these buttons here that by default if you click on them um, they add their individual respective layers so for example when i click on these three it adds their own three layers here you can see they have a lock next to it so that means that for example maybe you know let me just go ahead and uh, do a little brush stroke here with a regular brush tool you don't accidentally move it around because what happens is if you don't have a lock on it what happens is you can sometimes actually move the layers around and that's the last thing you want to do when you've done a bunch of retouching on a healing layer and you moved it around let's be honest me I, I have definitely done that i'm sure maybe you have as well but um this is set to normal so you can use the blank layer set to normal as a healing layer you can also use a blank layer set to the light and blend mode and this on a blank layer must be set here on uh, the the blend mode itself to work as expected and the same thing goes for darken you can use the healing brush set to darken as a layer here we're not going to go over the techniques about these individual um, layers and methods in this video because we're talking about the setup and all of that you can also customize them entirely so perhaps you are trying to modify them i can right click on these button names and i have a bunch of other functionality i already have a separate video about this um, on the use and modification and renaming of the panel so please check that out to see the different ways that you can modify them or edit them because you, you can edit the names you can edit the group names colors etc and you don't even have to have it as a healing layer you can have it as something else entirely because you can change the default blend mode of all of these so if i say screen for example and i click on normal it has the layer set to screen and you can change the group name and layer name as well when you simply right click and do that again check out that video for that option on modification now next thing is going to be our frequency separation options so the great thing about this is that we have two different views we also have different frequency separation methods so if i right click on it again on the low method you can see it says method gaussian blur and you have median as well so if i click on gaussian blur and i just click on it it runs as expected it has a gaussian blur option here i can decide on which radius you want to use and say okay and it has a low and a lie <laughs> and a lie and a high layer <laughs> it's not a lie it's very true it has a low and a high layer let's say that for example um, you're coming from my workflow where you have my particular actions in your workflow set from my classes you would simply need to right click under method you can change it to median plus extra or gaussian blur plus extra but if you are coming from my actions um, we primarily like to use median plus extra what that means is that it's going to use the median method of frequency separation like that and then it's going to add the extra layer set to normal which i personally like to blend some tones on in this layer and the reason for that is if you mess up here let's say you do something you mess up you simply need to just delete that layer simple super simple um, another thing that we also have um, aside from median and gaussian blur we also have this uh, part that says high copy and color so if i click on that go back and i click on low preview and say okay what happens is there's a blank layer in the middle set to the color blend mode if you're doing any color correction or if you have this layer here and the way that you'd use this is if you have a healing brush and you're trying to edit the high which is the texture layer instead simply click on this one and do all your work here but you want to make sure that when you have your healing brush selected make sure it says current layer not current and below current layer only because you're only working on that layer and then whenever you heal something what's going to happen is any work that you do will stay on this second layer so that way you're not damaging 
this texture layer here that will stay as kind of like a backup in case you know you want to you you did something wrong and you want to bring the original back that allows you to do that so this is not going to be a video about how to use frequent separation all of that stuff this is assuming you already know and you have your preferred way or method of frequency separation that's very very important okay um again if you're coming from my actions you can use median plus extra which you find on the retouching series uh, and that's going to be the closest replica to what you what you do also cool enough in this area here you can decide what uh, layer it selects once the command is executed so once i've ran this frequent separation i can automatically select the high select extra or low and then i can also select the tool that i want so if i click on brush which i normally do which i want extra selected if i go back and i delete this and then run it again what's going to happen is after it runs you will see that it extra is selected and my brush tool is selected and again we have a separate video on that whole function of auto run and auto select so please check that out um but yeah also aside from that we have this other second edit menu this edit menu here allows you to basically just rename them um depending on what you want so instead of saying low preview button or high preview button um you could decide whatever whatever you would like for it to be called um yeah and then you can see the group name their frequency separation names themselves so it's all up to you so if you don't want to be called high and low you can call it whatever else you you would like it to be called and you can also change the group name so instead of saying fs you can change the name to whatever you can also change the colors here too so that's very important next thing that i want to mention is the difference between this high and low preview so the difference is that normally when you do frequency separation uh, let's just zoom out here really quick this is my friend arbini by the way phenomenal model uh, here in houston i want to give her a shout out um, but if you click on low preview it first asks you to decide what you want your low layer to look like and obviously that's based on how much texture you want to displace and you know your resolution etc and that's how you do that however the difference is that let's say that you want to start out the opposite way where you are trying to figure out what uh high the high layer looks like first so if i click on high preview it first allows me to decide you know how much texture is going to be there on top and you know if you're trying if you're someone that likes to work with texture first maybe this is the better way to do it but now you can see exactly how much color is going to be left at the bottom you might say that oh this is too much because there's a lot of color coming through let's just go pull it back down and this gives me a good idea of how much color is left and and what the separation is like and how much texture is going to be on there i personally prefer this method because i can see exactly how much texture is going to be placed on the texture layer and i think like for me this looks really good because i just want to see the very you know general definition of all the pores and 2.8 seems to be the one for this one there you go and now it does the frequency separation the same way so the methods are going to be the same so if you have a gaussian blur for low the high preview will be the same gaussian blur method uh, but you can see here for me it's median plus extra and regardless of which button i go and access into the settings it has median plus extra so that's the difference between those frequency separation methods now let's go back here for a second uh, inverted high pass is going to be a separate video um, i'm not going to talk about that just yet but it is a method in which we uh, which we use for um, sometimes evening out textures, uh, especially for gradients. Um, it's 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 a method that we use um, sometimes, but again, a separate video for that. We have a dodge and burn area, and this is going to be really cool. So normally, um, if I click on dodge and burn and hit curves, you're going to get these two folders here, dodge and burn. And the beauty of this is that instead of having one layer in a mask, it's a group in a mask because let's say that I, you know, dodge something like this and I brighten it up. Well, you might say that, well, you know, this the saturation issue happened and whatever. So instead, what you could do is you can add a hue and saturation in this folder and you don't have to remask it again because the mask is on the folder itself. And now you can decide exactly how much saturation to take out or bring back or whatever it is that you're trying to go for. Um, aside from that, you have when you right click on it you have the ability to decide method so instead of saying curves if you want to do a 50 percent gray layer or a blank layer set to soft light and that's pretty much 
what I often do um, for a dodge and burn, if I'm having a blank layer in my workflow, it's a blank layer. It's set to soft light blend mode. Um, and that's cool. And then what I could do simply is go back um, and you'll notice that the name hasn't changed. So if you're trying to change the name, I'm going to right click on it again, just go to edit and say, instead of saying curves, I'll just say uh, soft light. And as simple as that, I'm going to say back and back because there's no accept button. When you edit anything, it just enters it immediately. You can't, you don't have to save. You don't have to hit save or anything like that. Now the button is soft light. And so you can see here, it has soft light and has the layer here under my dodge and burn. I can also, um, you know, have this button here, which is the default button. It's gray layer. So you can see it says, uh, same thing. They're both identical, except this one has a solid filled gray in it. Um, again, they both work identically. And for my purposes, I just like using the blank layer. But again, you have different options. So instead of soft light, you can also change the method. So instead of blank light, we also have infinite curves. And infinite curves is, is really great because it creates, uh, let me just rename that so everyone can see that. I'll call this infinite curves. I'm back, or I can just hit exit. And I click on it. And what happens is, again, it creates dodge and burn, the mask within their respective folders, um, you'll see a four point curve here. So you can see one, two, three, and four. And these four points um, try to kind of make it as realistic as possible without as much saturation shifts. Also, what it does is it based on your color profile that you're using, the four point curve differs. So it takes into account the color profile of your document, whether it's Adobe RGB, Profoto RGB, etc and adjust the curve accordingly to try and emulate the most realistic results as possible. So you can see here, there's less saturation issues happening as I brush across the face. Um, and so you can decide which specific method of dodge and burn that you like. We also have another one, um, which is curves plus saturation composition, or yeah, saturation comp. And so I click on it. What happens is um, it adds basically a saturation adjustment layer. So you can decide that, let's say if you, you start dodging and you want to adjust the saturation, it includes a compensation for you. I said composition, really meant compensation. So you can decide that after you're done dodging, if you would like less or more saturation, it puts it there for you. So that's why we have them in folders as well, but you could decide whatever it is that you are trying to do. Um, and then again, you can rename everything that you're looking for. And that's pretty much it. The renaming option makes it super powerful, easy to use. That way you have two buttons here for dodge and burn, and you can decide whatever it is that you, whatever method that you would like. For me personally, I like using curves, the standard. Um, and then I'll just rename this curves. And then I also have uh, a gray layer here um, or soft light. So I change that to soft light or 50% uh, blank layer. And then I'm just going to call this a blank like that. And I go back. And those are the two that I sometimes use as the beginner base. And if you're coming from my actions, then you know, I have dodge and burn and um, soft light dodge and burn. And that's how you can get that in here too. So that's how to use the retouch tab. We covered using these buttons as is modifying them. And again, if you're trying to understand more about auto run action and auto select tool, please check out those individual videos and more on infinite dash retouch where you can see how we use uh, more of this panel for the retouching workflow.